everybody, this is Miss Murphy. Welcome back, Art One students. Um, I am now doing a video to help you get started on your dynamic forms composition that you are starting this week. So what you will need is your pencil, your a piece of your 12 by 18 paper, and also a pair of scissors and a ruler. So what you're going to be doing first is cutting your paper down to 10 by 10. Um, and what I usually do is take my ruler, I measure out 10 inches from the edge of my paper, and I make a few marks. I already did mine, but I'm just showing you how I started. So I make a few marks, 10 by 10, and then I also hold my ruler against the edge of the top, make some marks, and then I have my 10 by 10. Once I have my marks, then I can much more easily create a very light line across here, and also like I did up here, I just draw my line lightly. You can save your paper for an extra piece of sketch paper on the other side, but what you would need to do is cut this down. So go slowly and carefully along the edges of your paper, like so. Take your time so you get a nice clean edge, like that, and then you're ready to begin. So again, save your paper. You could use this for a sketchbook assignment. Um, it gives you another piece of sketchbook paper. All right, so I'm gonna put that to the side, um, and I'm gonna start on this side because I had a few marks on that side. So now you can see this paper is 10, by 10. This is the size that you need that is appropriate for this assignment. Um, I'm actually going to be asking you to upload um, an image of your paper to see that it's the correct size um, when we do our progress grade. So you'll have to show your ruler next to it and you'll have to show me that you cut it to the appropriate size. All right, so um, the next step is getting started with your composition. Now you already did sketches that I demonstrated for you. So you had your thumbnail sketches and you need to pick one of those thumbnail sketches and you can change it if you want to. Um, you can use the same exact you know, idea, but the whole um, idea for your final one is that you want to make sure that you're using your compositional space effectively, like we've been talking about throughout class and also as I've been demonstrating. So I'm going to start by drawing my forms. I would suggest using your ruler as needed. Um, and I also want to create some depth, so I want to show a variety of sizes and scale of my forms. As you begin, do not focus on adding or applying any value at this time. This is just for stage one, phase one of your drawing. So we're just gonna focus on getting those forms drawn accurately. So we practiced a sphere, a cone, a cylinder, um, and we wanna make sure we include all of those forms and the cube, I forgot to add that one. So. Remember, you can turn your paper in different directions as you're drawing. And I'm going to start down on the edge. You can start really wherever you want, but I'm going to start with my cube down here. And I'm making it big because I want it to look like it is coming off the page. And this is already going to give me a sense of depth. I'm going to use my ruler here to give me a nice clean edge as I need. Um, and I think I demonstrated this, but I'm showing you another way to draw the cube. And by the way, your composition should not look like mine. This is only my example. So you wanna make sure yours is original. So I am going to now add this part. Um, I'm obviously going to erase the inside out 
This is another way to draw the cube that I'm demonstrating to you. Um, and I'm going to connect these lines in the back, making sure that this line and this line are matching. Oops. So these lines are parallel, and then I just erase out any inside lines. Remember to begin your composition lightly. Do not make anything too dark because if you decide to change anything, it'll be a little bit easier. All right, so now that I have this, I'm going to add another shape up here and I'm gonna turn my paper around. This is really gonna help you create more of a dynamic composition. And what I mean by dynamic is that we're making this show some variety and interest throughout, therefore making it dynamic. That's why this is called a dynamic forms composition. We don't want them all going in the same direction. We're going to show variety in depth and scale. We're also going to show some variety with our use of values when we get to that point. So I've added my cone. Um, and you want to consider also, like when you were, you're going to have to be repeating two, at least three of your forms, right? So I'm going to do another cone here from the bottom perspective. I'm going to draw a little cylinder. And you can use a ruler if you need it. I'm just doing this quickly because I'm demonstrating. And then, now the other thing is you want to make sure that you have, um, I haven't done the cylinder, but I'm going to do one back here. And this is where I'm going to show some overlapping. So I'm going to do my cylinder here and I'm going to draw the other side here to be parallel. Actually, I'm going to make mine a little bit wider. Another reason why I'm using my pencil to go lightly. And I'm going to draw the bottom of my cylinder like this and the top of my cylinder like this. So I have both of those parts drawn in, but I need to draw the top of it. So I'm going to go carefully along the edge there. And I'm not adding any value at this time, okay? So notice I have different sizes, different directions. I have two forms going off of the edges. So I'm off to a good start in terms of the criteria for this assignment, um, which I will review before I end this video. But I have some overlapping forms here. I have one, two, three, four. Um, so for this composition, you need at least seven to eight forms. So I am going to add another one since I have four and I didn't add my sphere and I'm going to add one over here, just like this. So this is a little sphere over here. And because I know I'm repeating a sphere somewhere, I'm going to go like this. It's also important to add and leave a little bit of space because we're going to be adding a winding object, which I'm going to demonstrate in the next video. So we're only focusing with forms right now. One, two, three, four, five, six. I need seven to eight forms. So because I want to show some scale and depth in here, I'm going to add another one of my cubes right here. I'm making it a little bit smaller so that it looks like it's going back in the distance and creating a sense of depth through the use of scale. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's good because I am going to add a winding object. I'm not going to worry about this area right here, but I know that I've overlapped and actually I might add a little part of a cone. I feel like I want to add something down here. It's kind of good actually if you use all your edges, at least three edges that you crop off. All right, so this is how you want to begin your composition for your dynamic forms. Um, so remember to think about your criteria. One is that you crop your forms in at least two to three sections of your paper. Second criteria check is that you overlapped your forms in at least one area or more. 
that's giving it a sense of depth. Um, also, you want to create size and scale variations of your form, so don't make them all the same size. Um, the fourth one uh, we're not going to get into until my next demonstration because that includes um, creating a winding object and a leading line throughout your forms. So this is just to get you started, but just make sure you're thinking about the criteria as you go. Thank you so much, and I'll be doing a second video soon.